there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got a lot of fun DIY crafts coming your way so what are we waiting for let's get started you notice I've been changing like my line there so it's not so tongue twisty and not so long either we get quicker to the crafts so like if I shut up now we're gonna get quicker to the crafts okay let's get going Today we'll be working on Easter and Spring Rustic Farmhouse Crafts, so let's get started with project number one. For this project, I'm going to be using two of these slat boards from Dollar Tree and two of these wood plank boards from Dollar Tree. Both are about the 12 inch length. And one of these wood hearts, I got it at Walmart, 59 cents or something, whatever wood heart you'd like. We're going to start off with some wood glue and I am just going to attach both of these larger wood pieces together. And I'll go ahead and clamp those and let that set up. Once this is ready to go, I'm just going to tape off the top and bottom of my big board using the frog tape. It's about an inch width of tape. And then I'm going to tape off one part anywhere on the smaller boards. This is just so later I don't paint those so they're raw wood to raw wood when we would glue those together. I'm using Waverly Wax mixed with water, Debbie's Design Diary DIY Little Black Dress Paint. I'm going to use the wax mixed with water as a stain on the smaller boards. We're going to make this look like one of those scroll type projects, you know, top and bottom scroll using wood. <laughs> Does that make sense? And in the little black dress, I'm going to paint the front and back of this. Now, originally, I was just going to do all paint, sand it, and then add my vinyl. And then it just was like, no, it just needs something. So if you want to do this project just doing nothing but paint and then doing vinyl or whatever, if you have an electronic cutting machine, it would look beautiful. But for me, it was like I just wanted a little bit more something to it. So um, once all of this is painted off camera, I will use my electric sander and distress all my wood pieces. Now I'm going to take that little heart and I'm just tracing it onto the back of some double-sided paper. And then I'm going to come in about a quarter inch or so and I'm going to redraw that heart perimeter. This is really easy to do. I always do this 99.9% .9 of the time. I'll cut this out. This is what I like to do when I'm doing wood pieces and I add paper on top so that we just see that little bit of perimeter of wood around that paper gives it that little bit of dimension. And plus, you know, as I always say, why did we sit and paint distressed wood if we're not going to look at a little bit of it, right? This is what it'll look like with a little bit shorter cut all the way around. Now this paper with all the little tags and stuff off of it, it comes from my one of my very, 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 very favorite, very favorite paper packs called Romance Novel by Prima Marketing Inc. Those a lot of you question like my papers and stuff. Prima Marketing Inc. is my very, very favorite. You can still get the six by six at Hobby Lobby, I believe, but you know, you can't, it's very hard to find any of the other sizes, but I love this one because you can cut out little tags and stuff. So I'm just cutting out the little unforgettable. You could just print unforgettable off, you know, on your computer onto some pretty paper and cut it out. So right here, I'm cutting some cardstock. It's just some kind of embossed cardstock, cutting two pieces a little bit shorter all the way around to fit my top and bottom wood planks here. So this is what it looks like. Now this paper here, um, it's my last sheet. I know you all are going to ask where I got it from. I've been hoarding it for like two years. It's by Pink Paisley. It's called London Market. I am sorry. I don't even think you can find it anywhere anymore unless someone's willing to give it up. But I've cut two pieces. The black kind of wood plank in the back I got from Hobby Lobby. And then this I'm cutting to kind of fit the center of that so I can layer them on the main sign. You can see how it's cut a little bit shorter all the way around. Now we're going to use Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth. And I'm just going to paint the front and back of my wood heart here. I'm just painting around the edges on the front because, you know, we're going to cover it with that paper we cut out earlier. But the back I'm covering completely in case for some reason, whichever way you turn the sign, you see the back of it a little bit. And I just kind of want it finished off. Okay, and while all this is drying ready to go, we're going to switch on over into using my sewing machine. Uh, and I'm sewing around all the edges of my paper. Those of you probably new to my channel, I love to sew on my papers. Um, don't be afraid of it. If you're a sewer, just sew on it like it's regular fabric. I use a 10 or 11 needle. If you try it um, and the holes are too big, go down to a 9 and I sew on cardstock. I sew on thinner paper. I sew on really thin acrylic. I sew on, you know, cereal like cardboard, whatever. This is what it looks like. It's an El Cheapy Brother sewing machine. You know, just try it. See if you like it. If you're not a sewer, you can take like, you know, a 
fine tip Sharpie marker and you can make little dash lines around your papers and make it look like sewing. That is super cute. But I just love to add this subtle uh, look to it. I think it just gives it a nice kind of farmhouse texture to it. You know, once I started it, I can't not do it anymore. I'm just used to it. So you'll always see me doing this. And those of you that have been with me a long time, you always have to hear this spiel. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, I just love it. So we're just finishing up on the papers here. Oh, that London Market paper. Yeah, now I'm using the wood glue. I've taken the tape off. You can see I've distressed everything, like I said earlier, and using the wood glue. And um, I forgot to kind of paint around the side you'll see what i'm coming up use the wood glue see when i lay the main sign on it those little edges on the the side there i got to go back and like stain those <laughs> but that's okay so anyway i'm adding the top and bottom to my boards here and then i will clamp that and you know let that set up and while that's doing its thing and drying i'm taking the open end of my scissor blades and i'm coming around and as you can see as i scrape along the edges the front paper scrape the back paper is not and you can see if you like that look or not i think it adds great texture to it i learned this like in my world of mixed media scrapbooking days it was it's just a great thing to add texture to your papers and i've done it ever since okay just finishing up here and if you don't like it don't do it you know I want you to love what you're making and the style that you love to do this is just inspiration and you know maybe try something new and if you don't like it, don't ever do it again. <laughs> All right. So for my quote today, this is I've cut it out of vinyl. Um, I will have a PDF for you and a PNG. I will have free printable link in my description box. If you don't have an electronic cutting machine, you can print it out onto your paper first before you cut your paper to fit your sign, right? If you do have an electronic cutting machine, use the PNG version. You're going to have to clean out the background, the middle of the letters, because I can't get PDF to work or uh, SVG to work on my iPad. So PNG works best. So you have to do a little work for it, but you know, it's free but choose which one works for you. So I'm going to add vinyl onto this. I think it's just beautiful. I think this song quote is perfect for an Easter project. Goes beautiful with the roses and the music notes and that kind of thing. And I'm sure Hobby Lobby has some beautiful, you know, music note paper and stuff. I've seen it or some floral, beautiful florals that would be pretty to use. Just get that on there. Perfect. And then I want to just add a little something more to it. I, I just wanted to add a little bit of splatter. So I take my fan brush, that drop cloth paint I've watered down. I dip my fan brush into it, kind of wipe off the excess. And then I tap my fan brush to just get some little light splatters. I'm not doing it on every paper because then it's too much. So I've just picked papers that I wanted to use. Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today and I'm going to glue my papers down. But now see how that sign looks all together just painted in distress. You could totally do that way but I'm like I just want to add a little something more. So you know this is this is a way you can go with it but you could totally just do all paint in distress, add your vinyl to the center and you're done. Just covering all my pieces here. Here comes the wood plank paper. You can see how I cut it short in the background so you can at least see that paint and distressing that we did right around the edges. And then I'm taking that little quote I cut out and I've got just some cardboard here and I'm adding a couple of layers to it to see how tall I want it. Yes, I want two layers and I'm going to glue the cardboard together. And then I'm going to glue this onto the back of that paper. You can do the same thing if it's a sticker and that would just allow that little, you know, word to stand up off of our heart a little bit like that and then i'll just glue that to the center of the heart just gives it a little bit of definition now i'm gonna go ahead and glue our main quote down onto our wood plank paper got to measure i got to make sure i've got it all right <laughs> and then i'm going to go ahead and glue the heart down to the bottom now i haven't added the top yet i'm not sure if i want to add a little rope hanger or not so i'd love to hear your thoughts on that if I should add a rope hanger to the top of our sign but once I glue this heart down that makes this project complete.
let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm going to use this pack of eggs from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use the trusty wood crate from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm going to use these bags. They come in like a three pack from Dollar Tree. Any little piece of fabric will work and some twine to start with. We'll add more a little bit later. I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary DIY chalk paint and white swan. And I'm going to just start painting my eggs. I put them onto skewers help a little bit you know they still move a little bit but um, start painting all my eggs I end up only using five eggs but I painted all six just in case and I did have to do three coats you know to get it completely covered and then also um, once they were dry I didn't like want a lot of the brush strokes so once they were dry I took really fine fine like 220 grit sandpaper and just did a little bit of sanding to make them smooth I'm going to use Waverly Antique wax mixed with water and start staining our crate while the eggs are off to the side drying. I know I only painted two on camera, but trust me, I did all six. <laughs> I stain the inside and outside of the crate, although most of the inside gets pretty well covered up, but I know it's done. And then once uh, the crate and everything's dried, I will off camera just some sandpaper and go in just to stress around the edges just a little bit, give it that little bit of a rustic look. But yeah, I want the inside done because, you know, you can kind of see through the slats and stuff a little bit. Now, my eggs are all dry. They're sanded a little bit. I've taken some of that Debbie's Design Diary DIY uh, little black dress paint. I'm taking a little fan brush. I've watered down that paint, and I'm just tapping my fan brush to add little splatters onto all my eggs. Now, I like to use a fan brush when I add splatters because it adds little tiny splatters versus using, like, you know, scraping the end of an old toothbrush or something like that because those seem to add, like, long splatters. I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint. I'm going to use this mud paint in a blush uh, color or light pink, and I'm just going to paint this little wood piece I have left over from the next project I'll be showing you. Uh, you could use, like, a piece of cardboard or something like that, and then I'm going to paint the little heart pink here. These little hearts come in a set of four uh, from craftingwithkimber.com. I'll have the link down below. Once that paint is dry, I'm using the stylus tool you can get at Dollar Tree, and I'm just adding little dots, little paint dots to it, because it kind of fits in with our next little piece we're going to be using. Now, this uh, next piece, I use these bunnies originally from Dollar Tree. It was, in, I think, my last video. Added it onto a skewer, and I added a bow and a little button to dress it up. I took the pom-pom off, and I added a cute little mini heart. Did the same painting technique and everything I just did on the little wonky hearts. These come in a set of 12. Again, craftingwithkimber.com. I'll have the links all down below. But this is what it looks like, so the little hearts matchy-matchy, right? But you could just keep the little thing as it is and add it onto a skewer, the cute little bunny. So now I'm going to use this bag because I like the dot pattern on it and um so i'm cutting the front off i was just going to use one piece and it was a little bit too thin so i'll go ahead and cut the other half of the front but i'm just cutting the bag apart to use it for the cute little pattern and i like the burlap look to it so you know you can use any fabric you want you know dot fabric whatever you can just use a piece of burlap ribbon from dollar tree it would be really cute and then i'm going to put both those pieces together and then just sew around it just to give it a little something something again you can use the sharpie marker and add little stitches around the fabric you could use paper to cover the front whatever you'd like to do add little stitches around it again this is what it looks like but i like the burlap because it's here here i can now pull on it and fray the edges and distress it and it kind of goes in with that distressed you know wood crate we're using stuff like that but you know whatever you want to use this is all inspirational right <laughs> here's what it looks like when that's all done now for the next part i will have a free printable i'm just showing you all the pieces separately because i cut them out because i did it in vinyl there'll be a pdf and a png now i realize with this project the PDF, probably the way you can use it is like carbon paper, trace it onto like the eggs or onto the fabric or on paper, whatever, and then use a Sharpie marker, right? So I've got four words and then I've got a title piece and then I've got some little bunnies here. Now this bunny, I made it so if you are using in vinyl, if you take the center out, this is the positive, it can go with your words, right? That's one way, or you can use the negative 
to go with your words. You've kind of got an option if you have electronic cutting machine and cut it out in vinyl. But the PDF, totally, you could print it out onto some tissue paper or paper or something like that and Mod Podge it onto your eggs if you want to go that technique. Lots of options here, okay? I printed out the little Hello Spring on iron on vinyl and I'm just kind of ironing on a piece of fabric that's going to go on our little wood piece for our sign. Again, carbon paper. And a fine tip Sharpie marker and you can write it on or if you have beautiful handwriting, write it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that cute dotted fabric onto the front of our crate here. And I'm going to glue our little sign onto the front of our wood here. And then I'm going to start putting my words onto my eggs a little bit up higher so that it's seen. But you could probably just do this by hand. You know, a Sharpie marker would probably work wonderful if you don't have electronic cutting machine. I think the tissue paper, some people like print out on tissue paper and then Mod Podge that on would look really cute too if you wanted a whole different look for your eggs. So anyway, I'm just going to do some of them here and uh, get that on. I kind of, when I go on a rounded surface, I kind of rub the center on first and then rub to the outside edges and pull that off. The bunny is a little bit difficult because you're kind of on that round edge, but not difficult, difficult. You know, you just kind of got to do a little at a time. You'll see here when I pull it up, it kind of comes up too, but it's easy enough to just put back down, but you know, work with it. But it would look, this pattern is so easy. Like if you do the carbon paper and the PDF, uh, lay it down and then the fine tip Sharpie marker, see how my vinyl comes up, but it's fine. I just kind of put it back down there and then draw it on. It will all look really, really super cute. These are what they look like. Now, in the bottom of my crate, setting those aside, I'm going to go ahead and glue in just some styrofoam here. And then I've got some moss I'm going to tuck down around the edges of the styrofoam so you don't see any of that white, you know, foam through uh, the slats of our crate here. And then once that's filled up, I've cut some skewers for my box. Three short ones, two tall ones. The short ones are in the front, the tall ones are in the back, and I went ahead and you know, stuck them down in. Now I'm going to take some of that twine. I'm just going to wrap it a couple times around our crate, and then I'm just going to tie a little knot here. I was going to do the bow here as well, um, but I wasn't sure if I was going to put the bow on top of our sign or whatnot, so I just tied it into a little knot here and then, you know, cut off the excess, glued the little knot down so it doesn't move, cut off the excess, um, and then make a separate bow later. All right, now I'm going to go ahead, since I know where I've got my holes poked for my skewers, I'm going to glue those skewers down in so they don't come out. And then I'm going to just add some glue all around my skewers and slide my eggs onto it until the skewer touches the top of the egg, okay, on the inside. Now those eggs are going to kind of twist and turn a little bit until the glue sets, but once that glue sets, those eggs are stable. They're not moving. So as I'm putting these on and messing with them and stuff, you're going to see the the eggs move around a little bit. Now, someone didn't tell me the spring word here, and I'm a little disappointed in you. I chose, you know, I've got like four words, and I put the spring word on there, and then in my brain didn't realize I already have hello spring on my title, and so someone should have told me, no, not the spring word, use a different word. So uh, next time, some of y'all need to yell a little louder and tell me I already have a spring word somewhere on my project. Just saying. So now you can see in the back, I've changed to the bunny word. <laughs> now I'm going ahead and adding just a little piece of scrap wood here so that my sign will lay level on the front and then here's my bow I'm trying to figure out where things are going to go here on top or underneath see how I want it I decide in the end to go ahead and put the bow underneath and then I'm going to add a couple of beads one bead on each tail of our bow and I'm going to tie a knot in the end of our string and cut off the excess these beads just come in a multi-pack from Dollar Tree Nice and easy here. I side to glue the bow underneath because then the heart didn't lay level and I didn't like that. So go ahead and glue that bow down underneath the sign a little bit. Perfect. And then we'll glue the heart down at the top. And then we're going to glue our cute little bunny in. And I'll add some more moss to kind of cover up that skewer under the bunny. I'll go ahead and do that off camera. And now I'm taking this wire jute rope from Dollar Tree and I'm twisting it around a paintbrush just to add a couple little whimsical, you know, twists in it. And I want to make a little handle. So what I'm going to do is I cut off like two inch or so long pieces of skewer and I'm going to wrap the end of the rope 
that wire rope around that skewer. I'm going to glue those on. And then once that's all set up and dry, I'm going to be able to take those skewers and push it down into my foam on each side of that crate. So I hope that's understandable. And then I'll just take some moss and I'll cover up, make sure none of those skewers or anything show. But that's just a way to add a handle. And you don't have to add a handle if you don't want to. I just thought I'd add a little something else. But once I do that, that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number three. Now, for this project, I am using some leftover spindles. You know, you can find spindles habitat for humanity. These white ones, these were actually, I had my husband go ahead and cut them. They were one piece. They came off of this three-tiered shelf that my cousin was selling at a garage sale. So I bought it from her for like five bucks, I think it was. And I took it apart and took all the little spindles out between the shelves. Um, saving them for something, and this is what I came up with. So again, I had my husband go ahead and cut them where I wanted them to be, okay? And then these pieces also came off that shelf. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make a couple, like, three sets of carrots. Now, these ones are going to look a little funky, but we're going to do it. The very tip top of the shelf had these little top pieces, these little decorative pieces, so we're going to glue these to these other little short pieces. Now, they're going to be some pretty funky-looking carrots, but I think they're going to look okay. <laughs> so I'm just kind of figuring out which piece I want to go to which. I did have to dig out this little finial from my stash and see that long brown spindle there and then this little brown finial here i paint those white off camera because that way later when we go to distress that white's going to peek through but first off we're going to take this gorilla glue and we're going to glue our little sh decorative short pieces to our other little short pieces and you know gonna make them into carrots like i said so get those uh, gluing so they can all set up and in the meantime i'll start painting the longer carrots Right now, I was originally going to just use this Dixie Bell chalk paint in the terracotta. I once these were dry, I ended up painting them, and I used my heat tool to kind of bubble it up. So when we go to sand these later, some nice chippy pieces will come off. But then I forgot and had this Debbie's Design Diary uh, DIY chalk paint in Summer Crush. So I actually used this paint to paint the longer uh, carrots. And so I think I end up liking this color better, but you know, everyone likes different colors and that's okay. But um, so anyway, two coats for all our carrots here. And I actually end up, even though the other ones are a little bit funky, I still think I like these longer ones better, but I like them both. So you can kind of choose what style you like and what you want to go with, but how you can take bits and pieces and put them together. You can make anything look like carrots. That's basically what I'm saying. But the Summer Crush paint, see when you dry it, um, it kind of dries a nice lighter color. So three coats uh, on this or two coats. Anyway, you can see the color difference here. Now it's all done. So this Debbie's Design Diary, I take an old cloth and I've got a water bottle and I'm spritzing it and I'm doing the wet distress technique. Debbie's Design Diary chalk paint works really well for wet distressing. It's a nice, really beautiful chalky finish and you can either spray water on your project or spray water onto a towel and you just rub the paint. Now when you do this dry distressing or this wet distressing and you rub off onto this dry paint, you're basically only going to maybe get down to the layer of paint that's beneath it. So as you can see on wet distressing, that white is showing through really nicely. Now this paint, 220 grit sandpaper, and this is the Dixie Bell chalk paint, and it just doesn't really lend that well to wet distressing. So the, you know, 220 grit sandpaper. And what I like is as you're distressing it, you can see it does 
come out lighter so it makes it nicer on the carrots but with the sandpaper we're going to be able to get down to even the third layer of uh you know paint that was on here here you can see the color difference so that makes it a little bit nicer this is what the wet distress looks like and then this here's what the sanding looks like and as you can see that darker layer below so we actually got down to kind of that third original you know color of these spindles so one of my pieces didn't have a hole in it so i'm just drilling a hole in it the others had holes already in it because it was part of that table and it was screwed to those shelves right it was part of that three-tiered shelf thing so only had to drill. If you have to drill holes, just drill a hole. Now, this is um, a piece of leftover, um, that MDF kind of papery wood stuff. And I'm just using my craft knife and a couple of, uh, you know, passes through and I can snap it. And then using some heavy duty scissors here to kind of trim off the excess. And I'm going to use two of these pieces for sign. I'm going to go ahead and sand it so it's all nice and smooth. And then the third piece is what we just use on our egg project. But you could use cardboard or something like that or foam board or poster board. That kind of thing will work fine. I'm going to use uh, Distress Oxide ink here in Walnut Stain and Vintage Photo. And just kind of distressing around the edges. You could paint it or use that antique wax. My ink was just right there handy, so that's what I'm using. I'm going to use these Recollections clickable stamps and some VersaFine ink. And I have cut out some papers to fit the front of our wood tags. I'm stamping on the word carrots. And I went ahead and sewed around the papers off camera, just like we did on our first project. Sewed around the papers with the sewing machine. Now I'm going to distress around the papers with the open end of my scissor blades. I will have the link down below for the clickable stamps from Michaels. I think you can find them on Amazon too, but I'll have the link for Michaels. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue our paper tags onto our wood pieces here. Again, foam board or cardboard will work fine for that. Now I'm going to use this boxwood pick at from Walmart and this foliage from Dollar Tree and uh, I'm going to put them into the holes right you if don't have access to a drill you can just glue them on top but I thought they already have holes and what a great way to get this greenery down into the top for our carrots and just put as much greenery as you want I'm using the Fabri-Tac glue to glue it down in. You can certainly use hot glue to glue those down into it. But I thought I'd do two different greeneries. You know, they're two different sets of carrots. But I think I more like this boxwood trim better for the greenery. But that's okay. On both of the carrots, I'm once my greenery is glued into those drilled holes, I'm taking some thicker twine here and I'm just wrapping around as much as I want at the base of that greenery. Hot glue would probably work really quicker here the Fabri-Tac glue I kind of had to wait a little bit as it set up to work around it but it did work and then I'm going to kind of wrap it onto the top of the carrot a little bit as well and then kind of double back and wrap again around the twine I've already wrapped just to make it a little bit thicker around the top and I'll do that on all of the carrots but hot glue would be quicker here like I said because the Fabri-Tac glue I kind of had to wait a little bit it takes about a minute to fully set up so anyway now we're going to move on to these carrots, adding the greenery on this one. But, you know, any greenery here will work wonderful. You can see to the left, my greenery and twine is already done. We're just going to do the same process on these carrots. You'll have to leave me a comment down below and let me know if you like the longer carrots or the shorter carrots first. Now I'm coming in watered down uh, drop cloth paint and a fan brush and just adding some splatters to both my little wood tags here. Okay, here's what these look like with the twine wrapped around them. Here's what these look like. Yep, I like these ones better. Then I'm going to take some really thick, thick uh, twine here and get from Walmart. And I'm just going to pull really tight around all three carrots and wrap around and make a little bow. And I'm going to add a big bead on the end of each tail of our bow. And again, these beads came from Dollar Tree. Tie a little knot at the end. Don't want our beads to fall off. Really simple decor in these because I wanted the spindles to really stand out. And then I'm just going to glue our little wood tag to the top of the bow. And then this is a little button. It came from my scrapbooking days. It has a little bird on it. It's cute. I'm just adding some twine through the center of it. And I'll kind of glue that twine into place. And we're going to glue that at the tip of the tag here. And that makes this set complete. And then on this side, I'm going to use just a plain wood button. Again, add some twine through the center. You don't have to add any twine if you don't want to. I'll make sure I had glue on the back of that. 
so the twine doesn't come out because I didn't tie a full knot. Again, I'm adding some thicker twine on on these three carrots. I pull it really, really tight to keep those carrots together, and then I'm going to glue my wood tag onto it. Same decor here. I'm going to glue my button at the top, add a wood bead, tie a knot. You don't have to add a tag at all. You could just do the button and the bow would be super cute. You don't even have to have a bead, however you want to do it, <laughs> however you like it to be. Perfect. And then I want to stain the beads up a little bit. So I'm using that vintage photo ink and I'm just using a little phone dauber here and I'm just, you know, gluing it on. And then I take some water and I spritz it on there and get that ink wet. This ink is made perfectly for this because it's scrapbooking mixed media ink. Daub that on, take some water, wet it, and then wipe it on. It kind of adds like a little stain, nice and easy. And that makes this project complete. So I hope you like all the projects I came up with today. A little bit of Easter, a little bit of spring. Please leave me a comment down below and you know what I'm going to say. But I'm going to add a little bit to it and remind you, let me know which project was your favorite. Number two, if you think about it, should I add a twine hanger to that Easter sign? And number three, if you think about it, do you like the longer carrots or the shorter carrots best? Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber and you walked in here for the first time and you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. When all hope feels lost and you feel that life is handing you nothing but disappointments, your immediate thought should be to give your hopes and fears to Jesus. He is the one that holds your heart. He is the one to change your life. He is the one to change the trajectory you were on so that as you're walking through the valley, you will know that God is your rock. You will know that God is your strength. And you will know that God is your stepping stone to reach that mountaintop. God is your grace to bring peace to your heart that needs love, that needs hope, that needs mercy. Listen intently as he leads and guides you to the promised land, a land that brings change, a land that brings healing, a land that brings all you need to survive. And as you may be walking the path through the valley, know that the ground could be a little challenging, maybe a little rough, a few pebbles or stones you seem to trip over, but know that God can take that dry ground, remove roots and stones that trip your walk, and water down the ground, rake it smooth, and walk beside you to point out any roughness that you may need to sidestep around. You are never alone in your journey, and you must trust in what God has for you in your path to lead you higher and higher as you make your way to the top of that mountain. And when you reach the top, God will have a view for you that just takes your breath away. He will have an amazing, wonderful, beyond words, scenic view that will bring you peace he will make your view as beautiful as the multitude of stars in the sky. Your heart will be still and you will have an all-knowing sense of amazement that he is with you and controls all things. You will know without a doubt that he hears you and that he has always heard you. He cares for you and that he will always care for you. He understands you and he knows what you need to make your life flow with living water from his heavenly throne. You must never give up and always look forward to what he has for you on that mountaintop. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.